Dear conference participants, allow me to extend a warm welcome to you, to all of you, on this day, which is a special day because we are convening uh, and beginning our international conference, the title of which is The Challenge of Transhumanism to Anthropology and its Implications for Our Understanding of Human Dignity and Rights. And we want to look at these things from global, uh, from global perspective. That's why I would like to welcome among us uh, not only the distinguished Slovak participants, Slovak professors and researchers uh, who are very dear to us and uh, some of whom have also traveled quite a distance through, through over Slovakia, across Slovakia, such as uh, Professor Zozula who came from, uh, to us from Nitra and we welcome him. Uh, we're happy he could make it. But I also would like to welcome uh, our distinguished uh, international guests who came to us uh, from countries nearby, so those who are far away. So let us start with uh, countries that are uh, relatively <coughs> close to us. We have Professor Bojan Jalac, a research professor from the University of Ljubljana, uh, Faculty of uh, Catholic Theology. Uh, so welcome, Professor. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And I hope you enjoy the conference. Yes. Then we have Professor Johan Dura, who came to us uh, from Constanta, Ovidius University of Constanta in Romania, and he came with his uh, former student, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's my yes. student now. That's right. Good morning, yeah. everyone. I'm very glad that I had the possibility to be here with you, with new friends, with old friends, and thank you very much. Excellent. Morning. Thank you for coming. And then we have special visitors who came to us uh, from a very far away country, and that is the country in Southeast Asia, the country of Vietnam. So let me introduce to you and uh, cordially welcome Professor Dong from the Institute of Philosophy, Vietnam Academy of Social Sciences. He's the director of the Institute of Philosophy and uh, the leader of the Vietnamese delegation. So welcome, Professor Dong. Yes. Then we have Professor Ai, uh, who is the vice president of uh, Vietnam National University of, of Hanoi, one of the uh, most renowned universities and uh, most important educational institutions and also research institutions in Vietnam. And uh, uh, Professor Hai is uh, uh, a, a special guest uh, to our conference in the sense that uh, he's the only one in this room who is not uh, a specialist in philosophy. That's not his major, his first area of expertise, but his first area of expertise is actually natural sciences and more concretely, nanotechnologies. Uh, but as a natural scientist, he's also interested in philosophy, uh, and, and more specifically, Buddhist philosophy, and Buddhist religion, we may, we may also call it. And so he will uh, deliver uh, a very interesting lecture uh, in this respect, uh, Buddhism, technology, transhumanism. So we welcome Professor Hai. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I hope that uh, I can learn a lot from all of you. Then we have uh, Professor uh, Hong, also from the Institute of Philosophy, Vietnam uh, uh, Academy of Social Sciences. He's the Vice Director of the Institute, and uh, we're happy to welcome you as well, and on us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And then we have uh, two ladies, also from the Institute of Philosophy. We have, uh, Dr. Dr. Hua, and then uh, Ms. Tuyet, uh, who came from the Institute and who will participate in our conference with their own expertise and their own ideas. And uh, I would of course welcome all of you as well. Uh, among the Slovak participants that I have not introduced yet, uh, there are professors who are local, professional, from uh, uh, the faculty of uh, from the Greek uh, Catholic uh, Theological Faculty of Pressure University, so allow me to welcome Professor uh, Pavel, Pavel Danzak, among us. Uh, he's uh, a specialist in philosophy, but also theology. And then Professor Sliuka, Daniel Sliuka, 
who is a religious scholar. And both of them are my good friends, and I'm very happy today to join us. And of course, uh, the organizers of this conference, Professor Kamil Kadis, uh and uh, Professor and also Vice Rector uh, Gabriel Pala, uh, who, will, who will address us shortly, and uh, also Professor uh, uh, Kardis, Maria Kardis, who is the dear wife. Uh, and colleague <laughs> of Kamil and, and our dear colleague and, uh, who will also address us and uh, welcome us uh, on behalf of the faculty. A uh, great uh, 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 faculty. Uh, let me say a few words before I have uh, uh, the, the, the welcoming address of the to, to uh, Vice Minister Pada. I want to speak briefly about uh, the setting of this conference and the program. Uh, we are convening this conference as part of a larger uh, project, research project, that is supported by uh, the University of Oxford, Ian Ramsey Center for Science and Religion, and their project, which is called New Horizons for Science and Religion in Central and Eastern Europe. And this uh, grant scheme is funded by the John Templeton Foundation. Uh, the project uh, that we uh, came up with and that got funding from, from these institutions is called the Future of Imago Dei Theologies in the context of the new challenges of transhumanism, a central European perspective that we might as well have uh, global, global perspectives on this, on this question. And uh, if we truly want to discuss this very important but also complex issue, the issue of transhumanism and what it may potentially do to our understanding who is a human being and how human beings ought to interact in a society, uh, then we need perspectives not only from philosophy and theology, but we need perspectives from other uh, disciplines, scientific fields, and uh, we also need perspectives that are not only based in Slovakia or Central the Central European region, but we need perspectives that come to us from other global contexts, and this is the reason why uh, I am so excited to have our Southeast Asian friends with us today. Um, <clears throat> Regarding the program of the conference, I would like to, I would like to point out uh, to um, the fact that the conference program that you receive uh, via email is, uh, has had to be uh, changed, modified quite a bit due to uh, some unforeseen events uh, about which we found out very recently. We have some meetings that we need to attend, and uh, some some events that we, uh, some of the uh, conference participants must attend, and so we had to uh, move some people around and, and uh, restructure the program. So the first session of our conference will include four uh, key speakers that will speak to us in this morning session. Uh, we will start with Professor uh, Don, followed by Professor Hai and then followed by <coughs> Professor Schalitz and uh, Professor Ravena uh, in Prague. And after these four uh, initial lectures, we will have a time for discussion, 15-20 minutes for discussion, and then we will have our first break. Uh, during the break, I would like to ask all participants who have not signed these papers, the, uh, the, the list of participants' papers, uh, please put your names there and your signature. This is very important for us, uh, for the management of the project, also for the university. So please, who have not signed the paper yet, uh, put your signatures there to the great. Uh, following this first session, we will then change moderators. I will moderate this first session. Then the moderator of the second session will announce uh, the next speaker. Uh, and uh, we will see how we go uh, with, uh, with the time, but uh, we expect to have an early lunch sometime around 12 o'clock. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the rector of the university will come to greet us at about 11 o'clock, depending on how this schedule allows, but 
Uh, we think it will be about 11 o'clock, and uh, also, it will be also an opportunity to exchange uh, some uh, information with him, shake hands, take some pictures, uh, and so on. Uh, and, and, and then uh, we will go to lunch. And then after lunch, we will have another session with more, more speakers. So if you have comments or questions as you listen to the presenters, I encourage you to please jot them down. Uh, and you will have time to ask questions after the first four speakers will speak. Of course, the speakers themselves can also ask questions. OK, with that said, uh, I now invite Professor Gabriel Pala, the Vice Rector of the University, to address us and uh, Dear uh, professors, uh, uh, dear guests and participants, chcę was przywitać a w imieniu pana rektora, z którym zastrzegniemy o 11 na Płodzie Peszowskiej Uniwersytety w Peszowie. I would like to cordially welcome you in the name of our rector, with whom we will meet at our uh, Lodan Zoom this morning, here at the University of uh, Peszow, in Peszow. Dovolte mi povedať zo pár informácií o Prešovskej univerzite, keďže ste na tejto pôde, aby ste vedeli, kde ste. Allow me to give you a bit of information about our university, since you have all arrived here, and it's uh, really, I think, good for you to know a bit about the background of the university. Prešovská univerzita patrí medzi, medzi tretiu, štvrtú, najväčšiu univerzitu na Slovensku, čo týka počtu studentov. When it comes to uh, the number of students, Prešov University belongs to one of the first four largest universities in Slovakia. Uh, currently we have about 8,500 students and about 1,000 employees at the university. Uh, heterogene Až po, uh, management. And our uh, scope of what we offer at the university is quite versatile. Uh, we have programs in technology, philosophy, natural sciences, pedagogy, uh, um, philosophy, management, management sport. and sport. sport. Yeah. What wide array of subjects. Uh, toto je tak skratko o našej univerzite a chcem povedať, uh, že som veľmi rád a veľmi sa teším a sme poctení, že môžeme takýchto zácných hostí až 15 000 km vzdelaných od nás na východ privítať na uh, Slovensku a na pôde Prešovskej univerzity. So, this university is, uh, is, is versatile in its offering, but is definitely enriched by having uh, guests and participants who come from a country that is uh, 15,000 kilometers away, uh, such as you, your guests from Vietnam or you know, other, other international participants, we are very happy to welcome you uh, at this university. We see that a person has been in the past, 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 has been in we see that our societies uh, are facing numerous problems, uh, whether it is war in nearby Ukraine or it is the COVID pandemic, uh, our societies are in crisis. A nechcem upriamovať pozornosť práve na tieto problémy, ale chcem vyzvihnúť to, že táto konferencia sa práve zaoberá hľadaním čohosi nedosiahnutelného, tak povedať, v úzovkách pre človeka. And I don't want to now speak too much about these problems, but I, I just want to, I, I mentioned it in connection with the topic of our conference, because the topic of our conference also points out uh, a challenge uh, that is ahead of us, something that is uh, difficult to, to, to grasp, something that is difficult to, to manage. So I'm very glad that in this October, we can invite this conference takýmto názvom uh, transhumanizmu, ktorý naozaj zasahuje celé ľudstvo. Nie je to len pre istú vybranú komunitu, ale transhumanizmus zasahuje celé ľudstvo. 
So I'm, I'm glad that we can host a conference like this because the question, the problem, the challenge of transhumanism is a challenge that uh, uh, all humanity globally is facing and we need to find the answers how to, how to go about it. Transhumanismus sebe obnáša uh, široké spektrum toho, čo vplyva na človek. A môžeme badať v súčasnosti, že človek hľadajúci, hľadajúci riešenia, hľadajúci nedosiahnutelnosť, sa stretáva s mnohými problémami a súčasťou toho sú aj problémy uh, duchovnosti. And uh, when we approach these questions and try to grapple with these challenges, uh, it leads us on the path uh, that is quite deep and, and quite uh, complex, but it includes questions of spirituality, which we want to touch upon today. Uh, okrem toho, uh, je vidieť v súčasnosti v spoločnosti obrovský boj v oblasti ľudských práv. At the same time, we see a, a very fierce fight in, in our society and in societies globally regarding human rights and human dignity. Práve v tomto čase je táto konferencia. And it is during this time that our conference is taking place. Nebudem to naďalovať a chcem vlastne vyjadriť uh, vaš, jednak vaš obdiv, že ste toľký kilometre uh, venovali ceste a vy ste prišli sem a obohatili toto naše prostredie slovenské o vaše témy, ktoré sú pre nás možno exotické, ale určite zaujímavé. A žičím prajem tejto konferencii a celému auditoriu, aby pri predstavovaní problematiky transhumanizmu a humanizmu zo svojho pohľadu našli alebo videli priestor aj z iných perspektív ako len z tých vlastných. And my, my last wish uh, and encouragement for all of us, or to all of us, is that as we discuss, debate and converse on the topic of transhumanism, that we would find the uh, sort of the grace or the, the ability to uh, be able to appreciate perspectives, not only those that are close to us or our own perspective, but also the perspectives of our uh, colleagues who will maybe speak uh, from a different perspective. We don't have to agree with everyone, but we can be able to respect it and we can be able to 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 a to je jedinečné, ale že na svete existuje mnoho pohľadov na danú vec. We don't necessarily need to agree uh, on, on everything, but it is important to be able to stay open uh, to the possibility that my perspective and my knowledge can be enriched uh, with the perspective and knowledge of my uh, colleague who shares maybe a different perspective. Verím, že tu budete mať Dobrý čas a prajem vám krásny, krásny deň. Všetko dobrý deň. And uh, so I wish that you have a good time and I wish this conference to be successful. Thank you. Thank you, the Vice Rector. And now I would like to ask the Vice Dean, uh, Professor Maria Cardis, to address us, uh, to, to say a very welcome speech on behalf of the Dear Vice Rector of the University of Threshold, uh, dear uh, uh, Vice Dean of the uh, Evangelical Theological uh, Faculty of Communius uh, University, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, all distinguished uh, guests. Uh, in behalf of the management uh, of the Greek Catholic uh, Theological Faculty, University of Persia, I am uh, honored uh, to uh, welcome you in Persia uh, to the International uh, Scientific Conference uh, entitled The Challenges of uh, Transhumanism to Anthropology and its uh, Implications for Our Human uh, Dignity and 
rights global uh, perspectives, uh, which is uh, organized in a cooperation between uh, the University of Prashov and uh, Comenius uh, University uh, within the framework of, 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 uh, framework of the scientific research uh, project uh, implemented at these institutions. Um, I will follow up uh, on the wise rector. In these times uh, of uh, rapid and uh, unclear uh, ideological changes, where the uh, emphasis uh, is on the progress and uh, one of the challenges uh, is transhumanism. Uh, uh, which is the main topic of, of your of your uh, research and uh, this conference? Uh, Transhumanism, uh, as um, um, intellectual current assuming, the current human species is still only a transitional form, another stage of human de uh, development. Transhumanism can be divided into, uh, into the following uh, currents Extopianism, uh, ethical uh, evolutionism, postgenderism, -gen immortalism, and other. other. Uh, it is um, now, uh, current, it is um, a great call for the scientific. Uh, disciplines because uh, progress will strongly emphasize uh, in the publications of transhumanism authors can nevertheless be beyond. Uh, Even of uh, one third Denny, the tra transhumanist uh, noble intentions of improving human beings and making uh, them happy, there are disciplines uh, that they are critical of both the premises on which their vision are based and the methods uh, by which uh, they intend to realize uh, them. You have a difficult uh, topic uh, ahead uh, of you, and therefore I wish you on uh, behalf of uh, the entire uh, faculty leadership, a uh, successful discussion, a time of, of uh, sharing, sh sharing uh, with each other, and fighting, finding uh, complete conclusions, uh, if possible. <laughs> At the same time, uh, I would like to uh, thank you, the uh, entire uh, organizing uh, organizing team of the conference and the uh, scientific, uh, scientific uh, sponsor for taking up our difficult topic, but a very important top, uh, topic for today's men is, and uh, especially for the men beyond uh, uh, Christian uh, values. Uh, thank you um, uh, very much uh, for your att attention and I wish you uh, pleasure, time, impression. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the nice team. Um, and now, lest we lose more time, at least in front of speeches, let us uh, move to the first uh, lecture of our morning session. And I will ask Professor Dong to please uh, start us off. You can either stay in your seat or you can go to yeah. the okay. front. It's up to you. Uh -huh. yeah.
Maybe I see here. <laughs> uh, so, uh, dear professor, dear my colleague, uh, first of all, I'm very uh, happy, very glad to be here uh, for sharing my uh, uh, my, my paper. Uh, why I chose uh, this topic? Uh, because uh, one of the key point, uh, key concept of uh, this conference is. Uh, global perspective and uh, we have many traditions many, many religions uh, but from polit political and social uh, perspective you can see uh, uh, nowadays the global divide to three main traditions uh, like uh, Samuel Huntington and uh, his student Francis Fukuyama said there are uh, the dialogue or uh, uh, challenges or even a uh, crash of, uh, of Christian civilization, Islam, Islamic civilization and Confucius civilization. These are three main uh, traditions now that can, can decide which direction will be uh, have uh, 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 the voice in the modern time. And uh, I think from Confucian point of view, we can uh, find out some, uh, some, some uh, uh, perspective or some, some kind of uh, source uh, to, to, to the problems of transhumanism from uh, the nature of a human perspective. Uh, so my my paper divide to uh, four part. The first, what is transhumanism? The second is uh, uh, what is the problems of transhumanism from the nature of human being? Of human being. <coughs> the third is uh, what is uh, Confucianism on human nature? And the fourth is the succession. Uh, what Confu Confucius can suggest for us to solve the problem of transhumanism. So uh, transhumanism is a, a liberation movement that advocates separation from the biological side of human being. Transhumanism promotes the use of biotechnology. Uh, Basically, uh, technology, but uh, focus on biotechnology to modify and improve our nature, transform us into another form of being, another spice, change the control of evolution from the natural selection, natural transformation to a process of conscious transformation, aim at eliminating all suffering and expanding human autonomy toward immortality and ultimate, ultimately a complete change of human nature. The basic technology of transhumanism are nanotechnology, gene therapy, stem cells, uh, neurochip, tissue uh, engineering. Uh, this uh, may be Professor Hai, uh, more professional than me. Uh, the original uh, of idea of transhumanism, uh, we can come back to 15th century in the work uh, uh, Oration on the Dignity of Man by Pico de la Mirandola. And uh, uh, he uh, describes human uh, as a creature neither of heaven or nor of earth, neither mortal or immortal. So human being and, and man have to rise against the superior order whose life is divine. 
And uh, we can see the, uh, uh, the, the writer Dante. Uh, he write about the uh, similar to transhumanism is uh, transhumana. That means uh, transhumanized. Uh, when the Dante she, 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 when he see his girl and he purify and transcends his human limitation. And you can see uh, the, the concept in uh, Julian Huxley and Nick Bosch show. And uh, a lot of uh, organization. <laughs> the second is uh, uh, from transhumanism point of view, what is the human nature and what is the problem of human nature here? Uh, transhumanism challenges the issue of human nature which is also the problem that all religion face. We can see, if transhumanism, if transhuman are immortal, or post-human are immortal, most religions will lose the theoretical foundation for their teachings, or at least religions can be right, or can be applied to immortal post-humans. Uh, if human is not immortal, then with the two great religious tradition, they are also have problem. We can see the two tradition from uh, India and Hebrew, two tradition. Uh, one kind, uh, uh, see we have uh, many lives. The, the death and the life is a circle. And uh, after death, we have another life. And uh, the uh, re religion from uh, 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 Abrahamic religion believes that humans have only one life and everyone just uh, live only once. So uh, after that, so there will be a final judgment based on what a man has done in this only life that he will go to heaven or to hell. But if transhumanism comes to reality, then that transhuman or posthuman is constantly changing, no longer having its own nature, <coughs> then what is after that, if they die? If they die, how is that person determined? The same existence, but through many biological, even intellectual and spiritual enhancement, that existence itself can have many person. We have a, that concept of person here many personalities, so the latter person cannot bear the consequence of the former person in the same existence. We have many persons in, in our life, and we have no responsibility for the person who lived before me, who decided before me. Uh, and the problem, uh, one, uh, one of the most important issues in transhumanism is the evolution. <clears throat> so we can see uh, John Harris, uh, he's uh, one of the uh, very famous uh, British bi uh, bioethicists today. He claims that it is necessary to talk in taking control of evolution and our future development to the point, and indeed beyond the point, uh, where we human will have changed, perhaps into a new and certainly into a better species altogether. It's not human at all. Uh, and now we can see the Confucianism on the human nature. Uh, what is the human being? What beside the essence, the nature of human being? Uh, for, uh, follow uh, Confucius and Mencius is uh, ethics. Ethics and, and uh, moral decide which is human, which is animal. Like uh, in uh, Aristotle, Aristotle he, he said uh, human is a political animal. Politics is not politics, nowadays politics, but the politics we, uh, through the politics we, uh, we uh, uh, make ourselves perfect on ethical values, that's politics. And Messiah said, from the feeling proper to it is constituted for the practice of what is good. This is what I mean in saying that the nature is good. The nature is good. If men do what is not good, 
the blame cannot be imputed to their natural power. The feeling of commiseration uh, belongs to all men, so does that of shame and dislike, and that of reverence and respect, and that of approving and disapproving. The feeling of uh, commiseration implies the principle of benevolence. We, we can see the benevolence is the key concept of, of, of Confucianism. And what is the origin, the source of benevolence? It comes from the commiseration. And Mencius, he confirmed, benevolence, righteousness, prior uh, uh, propriety and knowledge are not infused into us from its sound. We are certainly furnished with them. We have inside naturally. Uh, but uh, there is a sentence that very, is very important. It's mentioned said, that way by men differ from the lower animal is but very small. What is the difference between human being and with animal? Human being is not a high level as is as is creature. But we and animal are very close and the difference between human being and animal are very very small. He said like a like a hair. And if we don't uh, uh, teach ourselves, we don't have uh, education, we become animal. Animal and uh, human being and animal is not the same between human and the animal, but the difference between the human being and animal. This is very important. We have to choice. We choose, we choose, uh, we become animal or we become man. This is important. Uh, We can uh, so we can see where does human nature come from. So why we have human nature? Why we have uh, that kind of uh, the of source of benevolence? And uh, in uh, the book uh, Doctrine of the Means in uh, Chung Yung, uh, he said, "What heaven has conferred is called the nature. In accordance with this nature, is called the part of duty, and the regulation of this part is called instruction." So, the first one is the nature. We from the nature. Our, our nature is come from the outside nature. It's so the man and the nature is, uh, is be, to be one. Uh, and Monsieur said, he who said is how the honest metal constitution knows his nature. Knowing his nature, he knows heaven. That kind of heaven is not natural heaven, but a kind of uh, transcendence heaven. To preserve one mental constitution and nourish one nature is the way to serve heaven. We only we come from the, 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 the heaven and we belong to the heaven and we come back to the, to the heaven. So uh, in Confucianism, there are a very uh, uh, very important uh, uh, concept is the unification of heaven and humanity in one. This is very similar to uh, to to to, uh, to Brahman and Atman in uh, in Indian traditional religion. At the same time, at the same time, maybe ten to uh, six uh, century before Christmas, uh, be, uh, before Christ, they had uh, this one. Uh, uh, concept. The representative of the universe is heaven and earth. The representative of things is human. Heaven and earth are the same body. So people are placed on an equal uh, footing with heaven and earth, forming a set of three talents. We can three talents. It's a heaven, uh, heaven, uh, earth, and the human being is uh, in the center. So uh, when we say heaven, earth, and human, we not only mean heaven, earth, and people, but also the whole universe, own thing, own subject. The universe and all thing are in the same body, born from uh, Tai Chi, 
is uh, is uh, the uh, metaphysic concept uh, is uh, the origin of everything. Uh, so it is closely related to each other. The principle has governed the universe are also the principle that govern people. Human and the universe are related in harmony with each other. So we can see the Taoist uh, alchemy is uh, uh, transforming the heaven, uh, the, the universe into the micro of, of human being. And Uh, so, what uh, confusion can suggest to problem of transhumanism? Transhumanism presents numerous challenges to uh, uh, important confusion argument. The first, uh, if confucianism does not attach important to biological characteristics, but emphasize moral consciousness, then the biological factor has become Uh, decisive for transhumanism. This is very important. Uh, in Confucianism, it's not uh, don't care about our body, our biological body. The second, if Confucianism emphasizes learning to be human, learning to be human. If uh, Michael remember that uh, last time in Beijing, our world uh, philosophy uh, congress. It's uh, the, the, the title of, of our uh, uh, philosophy uh, congress, learning to be human. Learning to be human is the key concept of uh, Confucianism too. Everything have to to learn. Learning is decide you are human being or you are animal. Not you natural born are human being. Uh, the third that Confucianism attack rich important to family fa values, but transhumanism will break down traditional family structure, breaking down the foundation of Confucian moral code. If we are transhumanism, we and my son, my grandson or grand grandson are the same, maybe are the same or maybe I'm younger, so it destroy all the structure of family. And the fourth, Confucianism believes that man has a insurmountable limitation. These limitations are natural due to the nature of the birth of God. In contrast, uh, transhumanism does not accept those limits. They believe that as long as it's safe, any technical measure can be used on humans, for humans, so that people can be healthy, live longer, break the inherent limitation of human being. Uh, and uh, we uh, we draw three points to 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 success that Confucianism has direct view on some of essential question of transhumanism. The first is human being and the universe, the uh, relation. The first problem of transhumanism is that it separates man and the world, forming an egoism that opposes man to the world. While Confucianism advocates that humanism is root in heaven religion and the way of the successor greeting the way of heaven. Taoism here, in addition to meaning the natural world, also has meaning of transcendence. The second is the human body. Uh, the uh, transhumanism views of human body is tragic, is tragedy, I see, which is, which is hard to imagine to Confucianism. Although Confucius believes that people need to live themselves, cherish every strand of the hair, because the, the hair is uh, their parents give them, and not hurt the body that their parents have given them. They do not recognize the human body as a uh, best. Missing? Okay. No, Two minutes. minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With Confucianism, the human body is naturally associated with the uh, macroscope, with virtue and morality. So the body has a universal moral character is that is that is internalized in each person's self, even unified with the existence of society and universe, as logic as uh, developed in the uh, Greek learning, cultivates the body. We, 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 we teach our, our, ourselves 
must be by the way of materialism, sincerity, and dry mind. And this is the foundation for being able to enjoy family, rule the country, and peace of the world. The eight, uh, 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 eight uh, uh, elements of how to be a human being. The body is not just a system to be upgraded by biology or technology, but uh, it's a fusion, a symbiosis between the biological and the social, between technology and virtue and morality. And the third is ethics and choice. The confusion issue of human nature has many points to think about the understanding and dealing with transhumanism in today. For example, one of the key concepts which is also the foundation for Confucian ethics is compassion. Compassion is the seed of virtue. Uh, virtue is, uh, I said, is uh, the, the source of benevolence. The heart of impatient, uh, emphasizing the empathy and unconditional respect for others. So transhumanism will bring risks and conflict about human upgrading, human uh, evolution by technology. Then compassion and empathy will be the key point to make decision, as well as a most important a criterion to determine the content and scope of evolution of post-humanity. And the conclusion. Transhumanism is an objective, unstoppable change, uh, unstoppable movement. But it is necessary to be careful with transhumanism. Faced with the crisis of transhumanism can bring each country need to be uh, reinvent its identity, its own path. In other words, humanity is about to enter a new stage of civilization, a new type of modernization, and each nation need to enter a new process of localization with its own country, uh, a country that has already been established was a restructure, integrated, but still kept its own ideas and values. Those values and ideas are so-called identity, which make, make up the national character, which creates the advantage for each nation in the process of new style modernization. Confucianism is a part of Vietnamese traditional culture. The idea and values of Vietnamese Confucianism can continue to be reflected, can to be reflected, thereby providing solution to new problem, including Chinesism. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very 
complex system, complex uh, religions. <coughs> it's like a, a big tree, and then there is one tree that you go around and you cannot see the, 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 the skeleton of that tree. So, so that's why I, I, today I try to take out, take out the phys physical ideas of Buddhism and then present it uh, uh, under the, you know, the, 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 the point of view of the Chan Shimun Nisan point. We see that uh, even uh, Buddhism is very complicated, but uh, everybody recognizes that there are several principles that uh, all you know, Buddhist practitioners are following. The first one is the Four Noble Truths. We speak about the truth of suffering and something related to that. Is the first one. The second thing is the principle of the, the middle pathway. Is try to avoid the extremes, the extreme of uh, hedonic and ascetic uh, pathway uh, approach. So it's the same one, it's the, the, the middle pathway. The third one is very important one called the uh, dependent origination principle, where we say, uh, figure out that everything in the universe, even the Matter and uh, sentient beings are uh, interconnected together. Uh, together. And the last one is very important one that when Buddhism, Buddhism was born you know, 600 years uh, BC, is that the equality between all the sentient beings. So at some time, even for up to now, Hinduism is, is a caste system. There are the four castes, the caste of the, the priests, and the caste of the warrior and rulers, the caste of the merchant, the caste of the laborers. And even there's an outcast, if you know, that now it's called Dali in, uh, in India still, as it is today. So 600 years BC, Buddhism was born, it tried to erase the caste system by deliver the idea that every, every sentient being, not only human being, every sentient being has the right, has their own Buddhahood inside uh, every sentient being. So they all have a right to liberate themselves, uh, to, to, uh, to, to be liberated and to get uh, nirvana. It's, it's the idea of uh, liberation. <coughs> so uh, that's one of the very key important points that Buddhism is the bring to the to Human uh, uh, humanities. So it's the equality between all sentient beings. So, of course, I will not focus so much on the, 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 the sub uh, four noble truths, but the, the point is in that uh, uh, Buddhist, Buddhism focuses on the suffering of the of human being and how we can uh, liberate it. So, the, 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 the liberation the idea. Or we call the Mosca. The Mosca is not the new ideas. It's a, it, it has it in the uh, in Hinduism before uh, Buddha was born. So, but but the, the way to get uh, nirvana is uh, uh, by the middle pathway. It is is a new thing. It's a new contribution of the Buddhism. So related to to uh, suffering, there are three, three types of suffering. The, old, the first one we call the physical uh, suffering or pain. So pain is something uh, now under the model uh, the uh, model sciences. Pain is is a protection mechanism of, the, of, of any uh, living things. So pain cannot be separated from the living thing. So the truth of suffering is very clear to us now. So the second one is the mental uh, suffering. The mental suffering is related to the changing of our mind, the changing of the world, because it's too fast, and if we want to possess something, even, and we certify uh, ourselves at a certain time, and then later on, our mind changes, and then it's not uh, uh, what we <coughs> want anymore. So the second idea is, is the mental suffering because of changing of everything. And the last one, uh, the, 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 the the third type of suffering is that uh, ignorance, the suffering of ignorance. 
So if ignorance of uh, the reality, ignorance of uh, what we perceive the world is just uh, uh, our own interpretation of the brain uh, to ourselves. Or another way we say that it's a kind of illusion. illusion. So we, we follow illusion, but we have to pay a lot of things uh, for that. So it, uh, uh, in Buddhist uh, uh, tradition, we said that it's, uh, it's, it's a kind of ignorance. <coughs> so there are three kinds of suffering. So, so now, what, <coughs> what is a chance <coughs> uh, uh, humanism can, can do? Can how to help people get rid of suffering or not? This is what uh, I'm, I'm going to, to, to present today. <coughs> So, but, but before that, I it's not that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, before that, it, it is the basic idea of uh, Buddhism. <coughs> but what it engages Buddhism? So before that, I would like to say, to speak about a little bit. Uh, there's a king, a king, a Vietnamese king. In the, he lived in the, the in the beginning of the 13th century, long time ago. <coughs> and he is the, the, the king who only passed uh, three. Invasion of Mongolia. You know, the Mongolia at that time is the biggest country in the world and they conquer everywhere, almost uh, Asia and even Europe. But three times they invaded, try, they tried to invade Vietnam, but uh, they failed. And the first time is in the 1258, is when he was born, the, the King Chen Nen Tong, his name is Chen Nen Tong, he was born. And the other second time in the, in the, in the, 12, uh, the 1285 and 1287, so that's two times. Uh, at that time, he's uh, old enough and he, become, he became a king and he led uh, Vietnamese people uh, against uh, Mongolia. And after that, after three, time, uh, three times, uh, pushed the uh, Mongolia back and he uh, retired. <laughs> it's, it's the first time. Uh, we have a retired empire, <laughs> and he gave the, 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 the nation to his the son, and he became a monk, and he created his own uh, uh, sect of uh, Buddhism, uh, okay, uh, okay, Zen. And he, he gathered, at that time there are three, years, uh, three schools in Vietnam, then, and then he gathered one. So, what is his idea? So, we call that this Vietnamese engaged Buddhism. Uh, Normally, the idea of Buddhism, the Buddhist practitioners, practitioner, they, they isolated them from the society. So they just try to liberate themselves. They try to sit in meditation and then thinking and practicing just to liberate themselves. <coughs> but the, the engaged uh, Buddhism, they, they try to uh, deliver the Buddhist idea to society. I think Chen Nen Tong wanted to promote deliver all the, the, the Buddhist idea to, to the nation, to, to the rulers, not only to the normal individual, but to, to many people, but especially for, for the ruler the, for the, for the, of the nation. <coughs> so it is what uh, uh, I, I try to explain a little bit about the operation of Buddhism. So, <coughs> So now I do not want uh, uh, to say so much about transhumanism, but I. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. In uh, uh, five years ago, uh, 
uh, we established the Chandento uh, uh, Institute under his name, and I involved in the, the research and the training activity of that is the Chandento Buddhist Institute uh, in uh, from in Vietnam National University in Hanoi. So, so this is uh, where the Vietnamese engaged Buddhism that I just explained to you. <coughs> so here is uh, maybe uh, no more dimension about what is transhumanism, so I don't want to repeat itself anymore. But. Okay. <coughs> So I just want to, 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 to emphasize one thing. So the three people of transhumanists, uh, when I <coughs> survey all the review in many uh, articles and books, so maybe the people try to enhance the three main things. The first one is like a mental strength, like intelligence, how to make human being more intelligent. The second thing is how to make us stronger. So we build the strength. And the last one is try to extend the time span of human being. But from the perspective of Buddhism, <coughs> so maybe it's uh, very different from uh, what the Western culture wants. It try to enhance the lifestyle span of human being. From Buddhist traditional, we don't want to live longer. <laughs> we just leave it there. And <laughs> because, you know, the word samsara, samsara is the wandering, wandering in the recycle of death and rebirth. And for Buddhist tradition, uh, it's not so important that we need to, <laughs> to, to, to live very long uh, time. But the way that how, even we don't have to live very long, but uh, the most important how to recognize we, we we enhance uh, the, the, uh, the recognition of our being, uh, our existence, rather than live a long life. <laughs> so maybe it's, uh, it's a little bit uh, maybe uh, uh, different from what uh, you know, Western culture wants. So in three of them, I can say that that one is maybe very different. Another one is, what is, uh, how, what is criteria to define the transhumanism? So here I have uh, some conversation with Professor Banco and some of my friends and colleagues. So maybe gene editing is one of the things that uh, we can say that is, uh, is the border between uh, human and transhuman. Uh, gene editing. Electronic implanting, yeah. Uh, but, and uh, brain controlling. I, 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 I try to explain a little bit about brain control. In fact, we, 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 we control a lot of things. <coughs> But normally, we have to go through our senses. And our senses, our nervous system control our motor, our nerve. For example, you, you, we, we drive. For yesterday, and uh, Professor Panko and <coughs> drive me here. And with a speed of 100 or 120 meters per uh, kilometer per an hour. Of course, we cannot run as fast, because the, run, the, the fastest man is 10 meters per second. Uh, 10 meters is equivalent to 10, uh, 36 kilometers per hour now. So, yeah, it's, uh, the car is, is a kind of enhance uh, uh, our uh, strength. <coughs> but it's not transhumanist, of course. But well, what is, what's, how can we define that one? Is that when we can control our mind, we have to think about that, and, and then the car is automatically <coughs> drive, so we can say that. Thing. It means that we can, we can control things without human senses or without uh, actually physical uh, action. So it's a, I think it's a maybe three, maybe three, three perspectives that we can think about transhumanism. Uh, what is it? <coughs> but here, there are many things uh, to discuss, but today I just focus on one thing is gene editing, because it's, uh, <coughs> it's what I, I, I know completely well, but the other things are like electronic implanting is also uh, Elon Musk, they, they are working now, but it's a very uh, secret. They just saw some, you know, uh, result. I don't know how it's worked. So 
Maybe I, 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 I just focus on the genetic. Okay, here the one very very simple one. The, I, I can say that one is simple so We call the uh, sickle cell anemia disease. <coughs> so normally in, in human, maybe we have a blood cell. Here is a blood cell. And this blood cell, each blood cell has hemoglobin inside, and each molecule of hemoglobin, hemoglobin, we have four uh, oxygen ions bring blood. And by this way, blood bring all the oxygen from our lungs to uh, entire our body. But there is a, a disease where the blood cell is not instead of that the shape, they are like a banana. <coughs> and that one is come from the one letter that is uh, wrong. Okay? So if you see that it's almost the same, there are only one letter here. Okay? So you see that is the one letter is replaced I by T or, or T by A, it's only one letter. <coughs> Just it. And that's cause of this. You see, that is 100,000 US, uh, US citizens have now, and mostly focus on uh, Hispanic and, um, and, and um, African uh, origin. <coughs> so if we just change the letter, only one letter, so we can save you know, 100,000 uh, people. So should we do that? In fact, we did that, but we did it on Max. Here's a, here's a paper in the last year, only one day. <coughs> Scientists have, know how to change the, the letter back to the, the thing that should be. And they can do it very successfully, and the, the mice can live very long, and they can breed with other kind of mice, and they have a natural relation without any problems. <coughs> At least only one or two three generations, it doesn't help you so much. But in future, they can do that. Okay. So here's only one example. There are many of them, but I, I just give you a simple one where the gene have only one wrong letters in the, in the one. So if that, I can say that, okay, chance you miss, and if, if as a definition that I give you, okay, you do that. And you can say, uh, human being or sentient being from suffering, from physical suffering. How about mental suffering? <coughs> okay. Uh, we, here is the five major <coughs> psychiatric disorder that human being facing. Now. And I can say that with the developed, even in the developed country, they still have that uh, disorder. Autism, schizophrenia, Bipolar disorder, depression, and alcoholism. So it's not only in the poor country, but it's rich and they have the same. <coughs> so, <coughs> but what is the reason for that? And here's a paper that I just uh, gave you. I, I remember we one a month ago. Yeah, a month ago. It's very new one. <coughs> so, so, people who, who find out that. All the, the, the patients who have that disorder, they have the same, uh, they have the same uh, uh, gene expression uh, perturbation. Uh, I mean, the perturbation means that uh, a little bit changed, like uh, uh, the disease as I presented to you. And, but the, the, important that, the, the important point here is that for, okay, <laughs> three minutes, okay. <laughs> The important point here is that for mental uh, disorder, uh, mental suffering, we cannot, cannot only uh, solve by, by, by a gene. Because gene has many things. Gene has, we have uh, another one, this we call that. Yeah. <laughs> Epigenetic regulation. Even you have a twins, twin completely the same, and they, they, they grow up in different uh, environments, so they are still very different from each other. So it, it's because of the epidemic regulation. So I, I do not want to focus because we run out of time. Can you say about uh, ignorance? Yeah, yeah. This is the most important. <laughs> OK. So here's a, a memory ecran. This is that. Uh, OK, that one is a, a month ago. 
What do you mean ignorance means that, uh, for example, for, for developed people, for, for adults, when we're facing some situation, we have a very different reflection from the very young people. What does it mean? Okay, our ability is the same, but of course for, the, for experienced uh, uh, human, or experienced uh, adult people, they already passed a lot of experience, so when they meet that uh, situation, they, they, they know how to, to, to solve that. So that's why we, we try to <laughs> have a very interesting discussion with the uh, Banco about how we can uh, transfer an experience to the other. But by that way, you, th you know Avalokitevara is, is, is a Buddha, a very famous one in, 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 in Vietnam. And in fact, he, he or she is it's the, the normal people, but she passed a million of, uh, of, of life and she learned a lot of experience. And when, whenever you have a problem, she already has that and she just gives you a, 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 an advice. And you, you know how to do that. So, I mean, what, what ignorance here is that we do, do not have experience enough. Not enough, uh, not only knowledge, but even the experience. How, how can you transfer the ones to another one? So here's, that's why experience is based on memory. And memory, uh, theoretically, is called memory aircraft. A memory gram is, this article is uh, last year, uh, last, last month. It's so that it's, it recorded there everywhere in, in our brain. <coughs> so, if we can transfer, transfer the, the, the memory from one person to another person, maybe you can solve it. Okay, there are many other things, so I don't want to, <coughs> to, to say in detail. But the two, two things that I want, I, I want to, to conclude here is that uh, Buddhism has a different uh, uh, point of view, right? Like, uh, uh, Confucianism. Confucianism has a lot of things, you know, like a, a challenge to Buddhism, uh, transhumanism. But Buddhism is not like that. It's the second thing that science and technology practically can, can help us to overcome suffering, especially for physical suffering. Mm -hmm. But for mental suffering or ignorance, we have a lot of things to do other than just you know, fixing gene and etc. So we have a long way to go. So that's what my presentation will Thank you very much. Thank you for that small presentation. So now we have, we have had two presentations from the Southeast Asian context, uh, speaking about Confucianism and Buddhism. Uh, now we will switch to the European context. We will ask Professor Collins to present his paper and uh, followed by uh, Professor Barrena. So two European uh, presentations. Okay, uh, I, will, I will rather, I will start. Uh, so my paper uh, considers the liberal eugenics, liberal eugenics. And uh, I will present the critique and the arguments against the liberal eugenics uh, presented by a reputable German uh, philosopher Jürgen Habermas. And uh, uh, liberal eugenics is a, a form of uh, transhumanism. It's a form of transhumanism. So we know that transhumanism the term transhumanism denotes the big variety of, of standpoints. They are not all the same. We have radical or extreme transhumanism, but we have also more moderate, moderate position. We have also Christian transhumanism and so on. So I will speak about the liberal eugenics and as a form of transhumanism and as a rather extreme form of, uh, of transhumanism. So, uh, liberal eugenics uh, is uh, a view that we have right to intervene in the genome of an unborn uh, child to improve uh, his or her uh, capabilities. For instance, we have right 
to intervene in the genome of the child to improve uh, his mathematical capabilities uh, or, or athletic. It depends. It's, it's arbitrary. And Habermas argues that if we would do that, this would undermine the foundations of the Western liberal democracy, which is based on the individuals uh, that recognize mutually each other as equal and free. And so it is not the problem on the physical aspect of damaging the person, but on the mental damaging. This person who would be programmed, programmed would be unable or to perceive himself as free and authentic authenticity, genuine person compared to non-programmed person. And that's why he will have problem of perceiving himself as a free man. Because according to our Western tradition, only an authentic man could be free. The source of freedom is authenticity, to be what you are. And to be what one or I am is only my right. And it cannot be uh, it cannot be made by someone else. And if I am before my birth changed and programmed, programmed this is done be, be, without my consent. And this is unadmissible. So we have here few of Four object, objections, four objections presented by Habermas against the liberal eugenics. So, first, the interventions mentally endanger the program person, their awareness of the self as autonomous, autonomous, responsible, and equal subjects. Because if I am not free, I am not responsible. And without responsibility, everything collapses. So this is the first thing. The second is that the right and responsibility for authoring one's own life belong only to the person alone. Not to the parents, but only to me. Nobody can not decide that. The third objection is that we cannot know in advance what is good for a person. Nobody knows in advance what is good for a person. Life has its own dynamics and which transcends our forecasts and this is the problem. And the one being interfered with, as I said, with uh, must be able to say no. And this is not the case. So, uh, we have a contradiction here. A contradiction in a uh, position of liberal eugenics. On the one hand, liberal eugenics the, the partisans of liberal eugenics say that they are the advocates of human freedom, absolute freedom. We are free to do, and we are and the uh, philosophy, the political philosophy of 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 
partisans, advocates of liberal eugenics is liberalism, liberalian. So based on John Locke, basically John Locke, because liberalism is various, but this liberalianism is based on John Locke and in, in 20th century Nozick, professor of Harvard, Robert Nozick, is maybe one more to the farmer. So liberalism say we are stresses the uh, freedom of individual. Only individual can decide what is right or not, not society. They are, so we have liberal individualism or, or libertarianism against uh, communitarianism. Communitarian said that person is embedded in society and that he has duty uh, towards society and so on. So Charles Taylor is communitarian, My, Ma Michael Walter, uh, Michael Sandel, uh, Alison McIntyre, these are the, 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 the most uh, biggest names. So let me turn back to my point. There is a contradiction in the position of liberal eugenics. On one hand, we say we are for freedom of man. We are for liberal society. We are for extremely liberal society. On the other hand, exactly the liberal eugenics undermines the preconditions of such a society. Because the precondition of such a society is exactly the liber free individual. Free and responsible individual. And this free and responsible individual is possible only if he considers himself as authentic. And if he is programmed, he cannot perceive himself as authentic. So we have this, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, contradiction. Because, you know, uh, transhumanism is very various, but this radical transhumanism is usually coupled with, uh, with uh, libertarianism, usually. Buchanan and, 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 and the bunch, you know, is, is, is a, so they said we are for equal opportunities for everybody. And this opportunity cannot be left to the social lottery. So I born in the underclass, I'm born in the uh, jet set, uh, in, in, uh, in bourgeois class and so on. This, so communist and so said, this, this it's not fair to be left this to the social lottery. But transhumanists are even more extreme. It is not enough to block just the social lottery. We must block also the genetic lottery. So we must genetically improve inferior subjects or people to be in the same position to compete with more intelligent, more improved. So, so we are for equal opportunity. You know, this is the, 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 the one. The, the one of the main principle of libertarian equal opportunity for us, and then you know me me meritocracy, what you, you deserve if you are poor and so on. But what Habermas shows that these things doesn't fit together, that we have contradiction. Uh, and Habermas is of course starting from this European tradition, uh, which distinguish between ethics and uh, morality. Ethics, and, this is Hegelian tradition, you know. Morality is Zitlichkeit. And ethics is, ethics is, considers the individual life. What is the good life? And morality considers justice and social things. So in European societies, Western, we said, it is up to individual to choose which forum is life is good forum of life for him, or Christian forum of life, or atheistic forum of life, or Buddhist. This is ethics. But the things about the social justice, this is not the ethics. This is morality. So, so, 
and if we discuss the social uh, social problems, we must uh, we must find public reasons, good public reasons for our decisions. So uh, this is what uh, Habermas said that we must uh, add to the ethics and to the morality the third the third area and this is uh, species species ethics species ethics is something between uh, between uh, ethics which is you know uh, ars vivendi is uh, uh, the art of good life and the uh, morality species ethics is uh, what is good for human species? What is good for human species? Not for just society, not for human, for human species. And from this point of view, Habermas says that uh, transhumanism is against the uh, against the against the interest of species ethics. Uh, uh, this is more or less uh, the point of my lecture. Yeah, I, I have written it down, but I, I, I noticed that it, it, I would not be able to. Uh, I would be not able to read all this stuff in, in, in 15 minutes. Uh, so uh, the very important in this uh, in this connection to this is that uh, transhumanism is simplifying the view of man. Uh, it is. Uh, it neglects the important thing that human beings is a creature of relationships. So what is the difference between machine or device which I can uh, shape and to which engineering approach is totally appropriate and the human being is that the human being is in basis a relationship. And because a human being is a being, is, 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 is a relational, relational being, you cannot uh, engineering a human being. Because the core of relationship, human relationships, that they you cannot make engineering of human relationships. This is a contradiction. A genuine human relationship is uh, inaccessible for complete control, engineering, and so on. If you have a complete control and engineering for relationships, there is no much relationship anymore. So the essential feature, to put it in all terms of metaphysics, is that relationships, relationship is uh, unavailable. In German, unverfügbar, you say, inaccessible for engineering. And all these, all these, uh, Truths about human nature are neglected in the approaches of 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 uh, of, of um, radical transhumanism. I say radical because you know we have moderate. So the central the central points of discussion between about transhumanism and evaluation of it are two. First is human nature and the second is common good. 
become good. You know, because we, this is this tradition of common good. And common good cannot be, uh, is not identical neither to uh, general interest, common interest, neither to the general will. You know, it's the old tradition, the European tradition is this. We call it Republican tradition. Republican tradition is our names like Machiavelli, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, uh, Hannah Arendt, Charles Taylor, uh, uh, Tocqueville. Uh, this is, for instance, in Rousseau, you have this thing between common will and general will. Common will is not general will. General will is an aggregate, a sum, and a, a result of of particular interest. But general will, uh, common will, is a quality higher. Mm -hmm. is, 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 is generated in the process where my, where my points are changed through discussion. A change and result of this change is a common will. So, uh, uh, so this extreme, extreme uh, transhumanist neglect the concept of common good and confuse it with the general interest or common interest, and they neglect the fact that human being is essentially being of relationships, and the relationship could not be subjected to engineering. Engineering of human relationship is not possible. We, you can have relations, of course. I am south, southern from the Mario in uh, I am northern from Mario in the Roman, so it is a, all kinds of relations. But relationships is something which is not predictable, which is not available for engineering, which includes transformation of people who are in uh, who are in who are in uh, relationship and. Yeah, of course, of course, I have two minutes, I suppose. It includes uh, self, uh, how to say, self-activity. My own activity, my own effectivity. If I am only the object, but I am not the subject, I am not in relationship. And this unborn fetus with interventions in his genome is not the subject at all. Mm -hmm. And it is programmed and his subjectivity and own activity is destroyed. And he is aware of that, and then we have problems. So this is the more or less the point I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think thank you for reminding us that we should not mistake relationships for algorithm. They're not the same. We don't want to be algorithmically programmed. We want to have genuine relationships instead. They define us who we are. Now we invite uh, Professor Gravena as our last speaker. Uh, How much time? I have 10 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> then I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your invitation. I would like to present you something from the Dietrich Bonhoeffer's research. Uh, we are actually doing this research at uh, my, um, uh, my faculty, at Hassai Theological Faculty. Um, although I am more uh, concentrating myself uh, on empirical children's theology, but today I'm speaking about Bonhoeffer. Mm -hmm. My main thesis 
uh, was um, this one. If the next stage of human development is found in its connection with technology, it presupposes that every improvement is good for humans. And from this thesis arise the questions, what is good for a human being, what are her, his limits, and how can we overcome them? Uh, I think this uh, paper, this PowerPoint presentation, uh, is uh, adding Habermas, uh, because Professor Javetz uh, talked about uh, freedom, and my paper, or PowerPoint presentation, follow this idea uh, too from another perspective, um, so uh, it's not time to speak about immortality, but immortality is, is also part of my paper. Um, so I concentrated myself on the Dirk Bonhoeffer's theology, who was uh, it was uh, actually a German Lutheran theologian, and he was executed for resisting Hitler. And I uh, was trying to analyze uh, the third uh, volume of his work, which uh, uh, is entitled uh, Creation and Fall into the Sin. Uh, it is actually his, uh, or goes to his uh, first writing period, uh, but he is most known in the Czech and Slovak Republic uh, for the last period from um, the letters of prisons. Present. So, I'm sorry, I just forgot to uh, show you the Dietrich Bonhoeffer. <laughs> okay, uh, I try to make my PowerPoint presentation more clear to our colleagues. So, I will begin with the story of uh, uh, the book Genesis from Bible. Um, man was created by God as Adam and Eve. They can eat from every tree in paradise, but only one was for forbidden for them. The name of this tree was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Man disobeyed, uh, disobeyed creator, ate the fruit from the forbidden tree, and was expelled from paradise. Um, and. Um, it looks like a children's story and, or fairy tale, but it's a very, very deep uh, part of the Bible. And Bonhoeffer uh, brings very unique interpretation of this biblical story. And I also uh, gave you, because my, um, my concentration or my field is religious education, so I gave you the pictures from the Minecraft Bible, which is yet very popular by kids uh, uh, in, um, uh, in the religious education. So, the first idea of Bonhoeffer. Perfection always refers to free choice in human action. Uh, Adam and Eve as a first human being in paradise uh, are meant as prototype of perfect humanity. We know, um, uh, know it uh, from theology under the term Imago Dei, uh, so image of God, but for Bonhoeffer, Imago Dei is also Imago Libertatis. So, image of God is free. And he supported this idea with two terms, Freie sein für und Freie sein von, which means being free for, uh, for the other, and it also uh, means to be free for another. Uh, in this biblical story, it means that Adam acts voluntarily and freely in the relation to Eve. Fais ein von, also uh, being free from something, uh, it means that uh, humans are free, but also in a responsible relationship with God and his creation. And here raise the question, what does it mean for transhumanism? So, to be perfect means to be free. That is not to become uh, anyone's slave on the one hand, but on the other hand, not to cause suffering to other people, nor, or nor to take advantage of them. And what can transhumanism learn from the Dietrich theology? Uh, I mean, uh, the first step is uh, uh, to reflect and to precise um, uh, the terms as 
the freedom of man, the responsibility of the producer of a certain technology, the responsibility of the user or also owner of the technology, and the apparatus for safe, meaningful and planet-friendly use. So it was the first idea. In the paper you will have it more brightly and uh, perhaps more understandable. So the second one, our world is ambiguous and therefore our actions are ambiguous. Let's go uh, back to the story from Eden. Um, sin of Adam and Eve in Eden, so in uh, this term we need, I mean they ate fruit, they were not allowed to eat. Doesn't merely describe uh, in the Dietrich Bonhoeffer thinking one time failure. It's not failure. He said it's destruction of the original, between, uh, original bond between creator and creation. And that's why everything inside and outside a person uh, is uh, subject to inner conflict, Zwiespalt, uh, or division and Zweig. Um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer reflected two Hebrew words, Tov and Ra. And these two Hebrew words are uh, very, um, very interesting. Uh, and his, uh, uh, his explication of these two words uh, uh, means that good is not only that which is good, but also that which gives pleasure to a particular person, what pleases him, and what he himself considers good. Evil, in comparison to that, is not only that which is evil, but also that which causes suffering to a particular person. Um, and with this idea, um, uh, we can add that that which is good can be very evil for another person. So what transhumanism can learn from the Trigonovers theology? We are in ambiguous or divided world. One person's benefit is always linked to someone else's disadvantage. Uh, in the theology, this cannot be prevented. It's a status quo. But it is necessary to define benefit as well as a disbenefit. It is also uh, really necessary to anticipate situations in which there is a risk of the misuse or abuse of technology. Sorry. Third idea humans and better capabilities. Uh, let's go back to the um, uh, Genesis or to the story in Eden. There in this story is another character uh, who tempted Adam with the forbidden fruit. Uh, this character is known as a serpent and the serpent in Eden is promising uh, to the man, when you eat the fruit, you will look like a god. So he is essentially promising man superpowers. Uh, the theological construct uh, by Bonhoeffer is uh, this Latin term, sacred deus. Um, this mean, uh, but what this mean? The problem, uh, that this mean that uh, these are very own God's attributes. And the problem of the whole Genesis uh, story is that uh, man has attained them through disobedience to God. It's a main problem. Um, in the Bible, however, perfection, apart from the grace of God, is always linked to the desire for this sacred deus, be like the God, uh, to have God's attributes. And what transhumanism can learn from the Dick theology, um, I think uh, it's a, this thesis. Every superpower in the world is ambiguous and associated with the desire to reign and to have power. Um, I have three questions uh, because uh, when I was uh, writing my paper, actually I didn't get much answers. <laughs> I get more questions, so I would like to um, uh, now um, uh, put these three questions, which can be uh, perhaps part of another conference. 
How is biological perfection related to the experience of happiness and meaningful life? Where are the limits of superpowers and how do they relate to human responsibility? How can we ensure individual benefit but at the same time prevent the misuse of new technologies, especially to control the human mind? Um, and the last, okay, 11 minutes. Um, the last part um, of uh, this PowerPoint presentation, I found very interesting uh, thesis about Hans Jonas, uh, which I want to read you. It is not technology that endangers man, but man endangers himself with technology where he chooses it as the only means of supporting and benefiting men. And um, uh, I was thinking about this, uh, um, this term and about this uh, responsibility uh, uh, for, for future, uh, because Hans Jonas and also the Bonner speaks about responsibility for the future. And I think it's necessary to have scientific debate um, um, because we need the scientific de debate. And our main task is perhaps try to define concepts preci precisely and uh, to try anticipate the facts. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to suggest, Noemi, that you stay where you are, as it is for the following reason. Uh, Professor Noemi Gardner will have to leave right after lunch, yes. so at 2 o'clock or so, so there will not be much time to interact with her and to discuss with her. However, uh, you are still here. The uh, director of the university will come in a few minutes, but we have a few minutes, I hope, to ask you specifically, while you are here, questions uh, or to, to make any comments to your presentation. So let's start with Professor Gravena because she's leading and then we can discuss the, the three other papers. So if there are any questions or comments, now we can ask them and start the discussion. I, maybe I can start, uh, Noemi. You, if I heard you correctly, you mentioned that one's person's benefit is always linked mm -hmm. to someone's disadvantage or, or something like that, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, isn't this statement too strong, though? Yeah. Uh, is it always the case? I mean, it, it can typically be, or it may fall into that. Okay, the, it right? could be because there is a uh, this uh, divided there world. Mutual, there could be mutual. Yes, I, I understand you. Uh, the main idea behind this is that we are living in divided world, and um, uh, our mind is divided, and everything is divided. So uh, we must count with this possibility in uh, in each acting of man. So you, you simply see the shadow, uh, the shadow of the fall in all human interactions. Yes. Uh, in some yeah. aspect, we live at the expense of the other because we live in such a divided world mm -hmm. uh, under the shadow of. Yes, and so I understood uh, uh, the three Bonhoeffer because he really uh, uh, give uh, big, um, uh, big attention uh, to what does it mean uh, to fall. Uh, uh, into the sin, and he said on many places that it's not failure, it's really destruction of everything, and he uh, uh, he chose uh, another text from the Bible. He said this Sicut uh, uh, Deus has uh, uh, its uh, um, uh, biggest. Uh, biggest uh, problem in the story of Cain and Abel, because there is the first um, uh, first um, death uh, which was caused uh, by the human being. And to uh, take someone's 
life, it was, um, or it is in Bonhoeffer's, uh, uh, in Bonhoeffer's thinking, uh, the part uh, who, uh, which belongs to God only. So he really sees in the uh, fall into the sin very, very big destruction, destruction um, uh, in the um, inner part uh, of the human being, yeah. but also in the um, rest of, in the whole world. Yeah. It was a good word for in that respect. Yes. <laughs> okay, Professor Lula, well, please. Yeah, maybe, maybe not just the Lutheran. I continue the debate. Uh, Joseph Pieper, the German scholar and the, uh, the pronouncer of uh, Thomas Aquinas, in, in interpreting Thomas Aquinas, said uh, to live, a human being, to live means to be unjust. Mm -hmm. So the human life without committing injustice is, is an, an impossible. And, and to, to claim that it is possible is a vanity. Uh, you, know, you know, vanity that I, non humbleness. Hebris in, 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 in Greek. So, uh, pride. So, uh, we are, we are uh, damaged by the original sin. sin. And we cannot be ideally just. Mm -hmm. The only human being who was tapping the earth, this is Christian person, was Jesus Christ, yes. was absolutely yes. just. Yes. Nobody else is not possible. Is this also this thinking? You know, because in this sense, if I am unjust, I live in expense of somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the theological, common theological Christian yes. basis. It's, it's a hubris, it's a vanity, it's a pride. If I said I could be absolutely just. No, you can. You can diminish the injustice, of course, an important way, and together with others. But to say, I can be absolutely uh, just, this is, this is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this is a impossible. impossible. Mm -hmm. This is a pride. Mm -hmm. This is a big, big vice. Yes. Vice is opposite of uh, virtue. Mm -hmm. I think this is, this is the idea. So, yeah, this is the same. And Catholic, you know, it's Thomas Aquinas. It's the same, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I have one question, if, if there is a place. Mm -hmm. no, okay. Try. <laughs> or? Uh, well, this, this was interesting, you know. Uh, if, I, if I may interrupt you, just for a second. Uh, we will have to uh, take our database delegation now for five minutes. Uh, but the discussion can continue. Yeah. Okay. So please, if I may ask the five of you from Vietnam to come with us, five minutes. No, yeah. sorry. We will come back. Okay. So please continue with yeah. the discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I may appoint uh, Mary, you can uh, uh, direct, moderate the discussion. Okay. And uh, if there are no more questions for yeah. Yeah, for uh, no, we now later on. Okay, then we can stay there. We will come back. But, uh, I'm feeling like my staff is staying exhausted. Okay, please, can you, uh, can you come Sorry. back? Sorry. <laughs> okay.
the key to happy and uh, successful life is to accept this ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the very basis for virtuous life is to accept the ambiguity mm -hmm. because it's connected to what I said, uncontrollability. Because ambiguity mm -hmm. means accepting un un uncontrollability. So this is this, this this I very much agree. And now I ask you to maybe elaborate more in detail mm -hmm. uh, what are the problems of transhumanism with accepting of this uh, ambiguity of human being, human life. Why is transhumanist position at least of extreme, I suppose, transhumanism in, in, in uh, how to say, in... Uh, which con consequences yeah, we can... Which it's not, uh, uh, you cannot join it with... Okay. It. So they, they are mm -hmm. in, inconsistent with, okay. with, with, uh, with uh, really accepting the ambiguity yes. of life. So why is transhumanistic uh -huh. position uh, inconsistent with, uh, with uh, accepting the ambiguity of human life? Okay, um, perhaps, perhaps they don't accept it, this, but uh, the question could be raised in another perspective. Um, or that the problem could be raised in another perspective. Uh, if we are living in an ambiguous world or a divided world, we can think about uh, different situations. So perhaps the, um, uh, the way from the transhumanism is to think about um, situation ethics or a situation, uh, different situations. Uh, um, uh, something could be different in your country, in my country. So it's the same technology, but uh, the different situations. So perhaps, uh, so, so for instance, by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he's also uh, speaking or um, writing about situation ethics, as uh, about way how to how to uh, make some uh, solution uh, in the divided world. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe the best, maybe. better, better way is to put it nowadays. We say uh, particularly, particularism. You know, particularism. But situation ethics. Uh, if you take the extreme position, situation ethics, it's hardly acceptable. You know? yeah, okay, I don't because mean it's lecture. True relativism. Okay, I but particularism is not relativism, but it takes into account the specific of Czech situation, the Iranian situation, the yes. Canada. Balkan, this is not the same, no. But it's not relativism. Yes. But if situation ethics is, you know, yes, I, I, I didn't, you know? I didn't mean uh, Joseph Fletcher, but the idea of yeah, uh, yeah. of uh, of this that so uh, Bonhoeffer was particularist. Okay. Yeah, in yes. his time, he would say he was a situational ethicist, mm -hmm. but it was, you know, back 70 years ago, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where the situation in the world was completely different. So it was acceptable then. Now we would call Mm -hmm. yes. yes, because now the, the term Great. is connected Great. with other notions. Yes, it's filled with another Great. Content. Great. Um, content. Yeah. Yes, because he have to bring uh, solutions um, uh, in the situations which, which was really very hard. Mm -hmm. um, and um, um, he also participated on the um, um, Hitler's um, but uh, you can also find the letter in which he is thinking about uh, this situation and he is writing that, okay, I can uh, go this way, but also in this act I am responsible. And what, what does it mean, this responsibility? Mm -hmm. Yes? Everybody uh, knew that um, it's a good solution, <laughs> but he was also asking, uh, although he was also thinking about that, and that in, in each acting, I am taking responsibility, and each in each acting, I am 
um, stepping in to the sin because we are in divided world. It's a very interesting uh, way of thinking. Yeah. 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 Very interesting discussion, debate. But, you know, we are living in a divided world. Yes, I totally agree with that. But we must not forget about the, um, what Jesus Christ uh, made for us. Okay. Uh, and He give us a new opportunity, a new possibility um, to become what it, it was supposed to become, I have mm. to say so. But my question is, let's suppose that one of her is still living, uh, is still alive now in 2022. In your opinion, what was his not opinion, what attitude. was attitude, attitude regarding the transhumanism. Because transhumanism is not just how to use science, mm -hmm. how to use technology. It's something more than than this. Transhumans, mm -hmm. the transition to religion. something. You know, mm -hmm. for some people. For some people it's a religion. Is, is it, it's a religion, yes. It's a secular it's a religion. religion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, in your opinion, what was his attitude regarding uh, transhumanism, the ideology of transhumanism? Okay, thank you for the question. It's hard to answer, but I'm trying to analyze his own works now. And I, I think uh, uh, the best paper for this is uh, uh, from all the, the, the best part of thinking, or the, the a very significant way of his mm -hmm. thinking is from his uh, ethics and he speak uh, or there is theory about four mandates mandate mandates and um, um, the biggest mandate is church mm -hmm. and um, we are living in the divided <laughs> world but, but this world is um, all the um, uh, is also the birth of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and uh, if we are acting and if we, if we are acting um, uh, as a Christians, mm -hmm. we are um, um, we are creating or co-creating um, this mandate. Mm -hmm. So um, he would say that above everything, above. Um, Adam uh, humanity and Christ humanity, Adam's Menschheit and Christus Menschheit, yeah. um, there is emergency mandate <coughs> and uh, the superpower of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So uh, he perhaps would say that uh, we must be careful, <coughs> we, must be, uh, we must define things, uh, but it's our reality and we must deal with this reality. Um, uh, because he was also in an extreme situation of Second World War. He, uh, um, he was writing also texts about eutanasia mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and um, about uh, uh, aria, para, uh, aria, Please. Paragraphe. Arian paragraphs. Arian paragraphs and so on. It was very difficult uh, question. He, uh, was uh, thinking about. I think we need the theologians like him in mm. our days to have the power of the, the of saying the things. Mm. Yeah, mm. from a theological point of view, from a philosophical mm. point of view, of course, yes. And and one more point, um, he was just asking which role has the church in this mm. world, mm. and. Uh, a very interesting answer was that we are, as church, mm -hmm. um, participating on creatio continua. Yeah. So uh, we are really trying um, with him mm -hmm. <laughs> to, um, uh, I don't know this word, udržovat svět. 
maintain, maintain, maintain the world. And cherish, maintain, and maintain and cherish, and cherish the world. It's not just okay. like blind maintenance, it's maintenance towards good, which means cherishing. So we, we are also helping that the world's not end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. But also you mentioned, uh, you know, the world that he used, uh, the word responsibility. Yes. And um, in his works, and you mentioned it too, mm -hmm. It's the balance of freedom and responsibility, mm -hmm. which, uh, which is the concept some, sometimes uh, very hard to understand today. And mm -hmm. also you mentioned the concept of free, to be free from, mm -hmm. or to be free not to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how many times do we hear this today? We hear about more free to do, free to be, this positive notion of freedom, but his good concept was that it's not so easy and it's not so simple because we are free too but we are also free not to mm -hmm. together with the responsibility so I think it's it's together with this you know if, if you want this life of responsibility mm -hmm. and this type of freedom it's it's a model it's a good model but it is very difficult to follow today, maybe, mm -hmm. because we miss one part of it. And, uh, Okay. I'd like to uh, continue uh, this que uh, the question of responsibility for, for human action. Um, and what about uh, the relationship between uh, between action or effect um, immediate and long term action? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, if the uh, core uh, value, uh, values uh, of the ta Tasmanism uh, uh, in, um, individual individual freedom to use uh, to use um, uh, to use uh, technolo te technologies a very realistic outcome. Might uh, might be might be uh, the creation of uh, no equalities uh, society, but inequalities uh, society, mm -hmm. exclusives, exclusive uh, society. Exactly. exactly. I, I can add maybe one one beautiful point. I, I was reading a paper one German sociologist uh, about some greenies greenies. Uh, which are uh, uh, consist, which consist these grammys of randomly uh, chosen people from the population. You know, you have this, uh, like in both Greece, the principle of lottery. Mm -hmm. Not the expert, but you have lottery, so you okay. get uh, one cleaning woman, and a doctor, doctor of science, yeah. and one clergy. And some empirical uh, study, I think, with Yale and Bremen University uh, showed that these grannies in which the genuine relationships are taking place, not technocratic and so on, uh, take far more in account the long-term consequences than the expert grants. Which should be rather opposite because they Science would predict, science would predict, but because the, in, in, in scientific premise the, the, the relationships are reduced to technical questions, mm -hmm. and in these lottery premise are not, they are on the basis of general relationship more capable to take into account long term distance. Just to add to, to this, yeah. that it corrects, it, 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 it somehow uh, confirms. Your let's say intuition. Yeah. 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 Just just that this tradition both of yeah this is this is also Augustinian tradition you know? mm -hmm. because uh, Hannah Arendt quotes. Mm -hmm. Hannah Arendt made a dissertation on, on the topic 
Oldest people in the lab. Oldest people in the lab. And in very crucial point in the origins of totalitarianism is her major work. He calls uh, Augustine, which says that which says that the essence and uh, specific uh, proper characteristic of man mm. as man is that he has a mercy or a gift of God for absolute beginning. Mm -hmm. And this liberal genius annihilates my God-given right to absolute beginning. This, this is theological view. And, uh, in, in, and, uh, but Hannah Arendt, of course, used this in political sphere. This is a public tradition I was talking about. Use this in political sphere uh, because uh, for Republicans like Arnold, like Taylor, so the politics is not only the enforcing of interests but of creation of the world. Mm -hmm. Very poetically, creation of the world. Hannah Arendt says politics creates the world. In his lecture on politics between the past and future, you know, six lectures on politics. In, 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 the, in, the, in this paper, Culture and Politics, he said the politics creates the world because he creates the relationships. And the words, human words, consist of relationships. So politics is not just that I sit on the table, I have my interest, you have my interest, we negotiate, and then we have common interest. No. I sit on the table with you and I am prepared to be changed mm -hmm. with your discussion with you. And with this change, we change the world, we create the world. So th this is this is and also more offer this this part of this tradition, relationship tradition, because he was fan of Kierkegaard. Mm -hmm. And Kierkegaard is totally a relational thinker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kierkegaard is everything is relation, even self mm -hmm. itself is relation. Mm -hmm. Not just that I'm the crucial matrix is a relation to God itself. Itself is a relationship, mm -hmm. and this is this is this is the basis of this yes. relational republicanism. Yeah? Yeah. That yes. mm -hmm. Kierkegaard, Bonhoeffer, mm -hmm. Bonhoeffer is for me part of this. Mm -hmm. The stress is more theological than in Taylor, but all all this that it's a relation, relation, mm -hmm. relationship. I very agree. I would like to add uh, the Bonhoeffer. Uh, is going in the idea of personalism, yeah, of uh, uh, I and you. Uh, but in Santorum Comunio, which uh, he was right, it was his dissertation thesis, uh, which he uh, wrote in 1927, uh, he put the third entity into the me and you, and it's a relationship. He said the relationship or the relation between you and I is uh, very important, perhaps most important in this uh, um, in, um, whole connections. Uh, uh, and uh, the second idea I would like to add, he said we are co-creating co reality um, in each our acting, not only politicians, he said they have perhaps more responsibility for the acting because it's more seen, it's more visible. But um, also we in just normal day, we are changing the world in our each acting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. uh, just not for what also creative continue on. This yeah. is an Augustine idea. Yeah. This is Augustine here to yes. Bonhoeffer, you know, it's, 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 it's Hannah Arendt who calls uh, in dissertation, in, it's not just the accident that Hannah Arendt uh, write a PhD of Augustine and he yes. is, she is thinking like he is. This is not an accident. It's, he was formed by this kind of thing. I think that, uh, I don't know.
doctor is uh, uh, not uh, uh, so new because, mm. according to my opinion, uh, it is uh, in close connection with uh, Gnosis. Mm. They also, Gnosis, uh, they also want to create new world, new relationships, but this no connection with uh, uh, nature situation, may I say, uh, with, uh, with uh, respect to our limits. And uh, now in this uh, movement of transhumanism and so, we can see maybe uh, repetition of this old idea. Yeah, sure. In a new form, yes. In a new form. Yeah. Situation. Yeah. Also neglecting the body, no? Yeah. Yes. This is is This is techno mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <coughs> uh, if, if, that, if we have time, what was the relationship between Bonhoeffer and uh, Romano Guardini? You know, because Guardini was a big uh, critic of the technical situation instead of med medi meditation and uh, the, uh, the possibility that we uh, step back in our uh, in inner life and so on. Is, are there any, 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 you have any idea about the relationship with both of them and Now I don't have in my mind any text mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. can speak about that, about the, um, it is very different if you are reading the first writing of the letters um, before, um, before, um, ah, macht er Greifung Hitlers. Uh, yeah. be before, uh, so uh, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, yes, uh, perhaps still um, uh, 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 1934, uh, then during the uh, Kirchenkampf, uh, so during the um, uh, very, um, um, church, during the church, church, war. Church, church, church war, and uh, in the prison. There are uh, really three uh, different bonhoeffers what you are reading. Uh -huh. yes. The first one is more scientific. He uh, also wrote his implementation thesis about uh, act and being. Uh, um, it's very, it's a very hard systematic theological thing. Um, in uh, 36, he's writing this uh, this uh, cost of discipleship which is very known in Czech and Slovak Republic, um, uh, which is more um, oriented on practical theology and pra pra uh, uh, pra practical questions. And uh, from the prison, from his last time, so 41 till 45, he is concentrating himself very on the ethics and on the Christianity, which is strong, but on the one hand, but on the other hand, very often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds logical. First, you, first you establish the theoretical. Okay. Oh, yes, it's just logic. You, can think, you know, in a sense, it's logical. You know? yeah. I also myself, I spent first my first years for theoretical theology around 2000. It was, every, it was everything the year. And now we are more open. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to think about social and political use question without having clear concepts of you know, self, body, act, being. So please, may I go to say that? Yes, I'm free to do Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, and now, uh, uh, are you right? All of you to uh, discuss discuss uh, Professor uh, Jolet's uh, presentation. But maybe it would be better. No, we will discuss. Yes. Expose myself. Yeah, I have just 
uh, maybe uh, two questions. The first one, it just uh, here about you, you were saying about uh, the virus, about the uh, not I'm, I'm not sure that I'm hearing it right, but to be a um, human being, you mean to be unjust, right? So you mean unjust mean in, in profession, right? Or not? Unjust, justice in, in Catholic tradition uh -huh. means that, but not in Catholic, from Plato and Aristotle, uh -huh. and then Aristotle is present in Aquinas, yeah. and also in Spinoza. Mm. So in Western tradition, from Plato to Spinoza, justice means that everybody gets what belongs to him. Mm -hmm. If not everybody the same share, but what everybody what the, what what belongs to him. Mm -hmm. So it is not egalitarianism mm -hmm. total, but it's also a meritocratic element present. Mm -hmm. So this is the basis. This is from Plato to to Spinoza. Uh, so. Uh, and this is one thing, this is the definition of justice. And then you have uh, several dimensions or, or, or kinds of justice, mm -hmm. kinds of justice. Yeah. And therefore you have several dimensions of this statement. Yeah. So, so the first justice is, is the first Aquinas definition Ferentius, three kinds of justice. Mm -hmm. The first justice is commun communicative justice. Yeah. This is, for instance, we, we, we sign the agreement uh, and, and, and we, we have commitments to each other. Then the, the second kind of justice is distributive justice, or if you want social justice, but distributive justice, that the distribution of the common uh, uh, common um, wealth of the nation, for instance, is justly distributed. And the third is uh, contributing justice. This contributing justice is not regulated by law, but by the conscience of the individual. So for instance, I was raised in Slovenia. Uh, Slovenian teachers, women, educated me in basic school, in grand school, in the faculty. Then I go to the Princeton and became a good big professor, earn a lot of money, and I give nothing back to my Slovenian country, saying, this is just my success. No, you arrived with this small woman in the kindergarten. And I said, so you are, if you are contributing in just, you will give back something. To your society. So you have these, at least these three dimensions of justice, and then you have also, according to these three dimensions, the meaning of this statement that to live means to live, to be unjust. You know? So we are not able, we are not able to be totally just. You know? This must be aware. And here is another, if I feel time, another more deeper reason for this, uh, for this statement. Uh, we can find it in Kierkegaard. There is no table. Uh, Søren Kierkegaard, the Danish uh, theologian and philosopher from 19th century, in his long, long paper, Gospel of Sufferings. Gospel of Sufferings. This is, you can find it in Christian collective works. And here, Kierkegaard in Gospel of Sufferings uh, said that the only possibility to be for the truth that God is love, God is love, because in Christianity God is love, that God is love is that we are not innocent. Mm -hmm. so the only possibility for God to be love is that no human being is innocent. 
because every human being suffers. And <coughs> if only one example would be present of human being which is innocent but suffers, God couldn't be loved. So the only this is the deep grounding of the dogma of original sin. Original sin. Without the dogma of original sin, so goes the captive argumentation, God couldn't be loved. And if the principle of the universe, which is God, is not love, that every, then everything is in vain. Everything is without meaning. So, and a, a, a form of being, of not being innocent, is being unjust. So here is the connection. So you have, you have, you have uh, another grounding of the thesis that this could, that God couldn't be loved. And exactly the Joseph Pieper I've mentioned, who is one of the greatest scholars of Thomas Aquinas, the philosopher, German philosopher of the 20th century, was also a big scholar of Kierkegaard. So this is, this is not, uh, this is not an accident. Because what Pieper adds to Thomas Aquinas, that he pointed on the existential dimension of Thomas Aquinas' thought. Existential is dimension. No? Thomas Aquinas is not just a system, it is always be beyond the surface a true existentialist. <coughs> this is, this is a, so, two arguments, but maybe this from, I can send you my paper on, on, on if you want, on Kierkegaard on sufferings in, in English. It's all, already also on research gate, so I, you can then read it alone in the text. But, but it's Maybe so, so, okay. so only one question that you think you said about the original sin of uh, human being. So do you think that the chance you listen can have something? Can yeah. Unify something from you know when you were born and the big thing that you can have no less sin than no? Oh absolutely. Transhumanism at least implicitly, implicitly. <clears throat> denies or is incompatible with the principle or dogma of original sin. Because the dream of transhumanism is not limited to improve human physical or cognitive capabilities, but also moral capabilities. So they find it as a moral duty, some of them, moral duty, to engage in, uh, in improvement of men because of moral improvement. And if you don't accept the limits to improvement, you can say, yeah, we can create an absolutely good man. But Kierkegaard said, no, because if men would be absolutely good, there would be no meaning of life. Yeah. Because if you want to have meaning of life, you must have a task, task to improve yourself. And if you are absolutely good, then you don't have a task. And without task, there's no meaning. This is the idea. We would be without meaning if we would be perfect. This is the problem. So, all worldviews, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, Confucianism, have one, one common point, I hope you agree, that the way to happiness and to improvement leads not through the negation of human limitation, but first to accepting our limitation. Only on the ground of this acceptance, we can improve ourselves. This is the, and this is the 
common point of all world religion, of Buddhism, of, of Christianity, of Hinduism, of Confucianism, as far as we can say it's religion, but uh, and Islam, of course. This, this is the point. So it negates, it negates the, the principles of our civilizations, not just Western civilization, I showed with Habermas, but with all civilizations which are based on both religions, even if they are secularized. You know, but as I said, one English scholar said that he met a Turkish, Turkish colleague, and this Englishman said, the Turkish man said, I'm an atheist. And this English man said, I'm an atheist too. But the Turkish said, yeah, but I'm an Islamic atheist, an European atheist. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is very important, you know. So, but to, to, to repeat, transhumanism, radical transhumanism, because not moderate, you know, potential, undermines the very grounds of world civilizations, which is Particularly obvious if you compare it with the world religions, which are in the substance of all of all of all of all our civilizations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excuse me, uh, but, uh, I have uh, I have to stop uh, our discussion, but uh, but now uh, I invite you uh, to lunch, and uh, we can we can continue our discussion during during uh, the lunch. Or, or uh, in the afternoon uh, uh, part of 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 class. Thank you very much for uh, for all. And uh, <laughs> for the leaders. Yeah. For the <laughs> For the you can you can say this uh, all all of your your uh, things yeah and uh, after lunch we will turn to the meeting.